whenever we look at sort of fitness testing at this sort of level, the real objective is to be able to describe that fitness test, but also to be able to evaluate it. So we're gonna give the characteristics of these tests, but we also need to be absolutely clear that we can evaluate and give the strengths of the weaknesses, the fours, the against, and then we can reach a balanced conclusion, a representative conclusion. So that's our job. Now with that in mind, I thought I'd do the sort of the shortcut to the description part. And with the hand grip dynamometer test, which I'm gonna write in for you, in fact, I'm gonna to refer to it as the grip strength dynamometer test. Notice this word dynamometer is somewhat of a spelling and it's something you might just wanna make sure you can spell dynamometer, there we go. Now, the whole point of this is the description first. We've got a max and a static strength test. Okay, so this is no good for measuring elastic strength, dynamic strength, it's, it's, it's for these particular types. We do it with our dominant hand, right-handed people with their right hand and so on. We start with the hand up above the head and, we, and as we squeeze the handle, we bring that down to our side. We repeat three times and of course the maximum reading that we achieve of those three is the score that we achieve. Now this has some advantages and disadvantages. The first one is it's simple and cheap. Yes, we have to buy the dynamometer equipment, but most school sports clubs will be able to do that at a few pounds, so therefore it's possible. The protocol itself, the protocol being actually how we do this, the description, I suppose, is basic. It's not hard to do this. And it's also a field test. So these are all strengths of this test, right? We can get this done nice and easily, but there are weaknesses. I'm not sure one of them is where I'm gonna put the weaknesses. But what I wanna stress here is that this is a maximal test. In other words, it requires that full effort of the person that might have sort of motivational aspects to it. It's not valid for the whole body. So we are measuring forearm strength here. We can't necessarily argue that this is a valid measure for let's say leg strength. That wouldn't be representative. So that validity is a bit of an issue. And it's not relevant. It's not for dynamic types of strength. So it's not for our explosive. It's not for, um, uh, it's not for our strength endurance. It doesn't allow us anything which is particularly movement-based type strength. It doesn't allow us really to be able to measure those elastic strength being a good example. Now, let's look at another test here. We've got the one rep max test. And a lot that's sort of challenging here is about just the actual process of it. So let's go through that process. We are measuring max strength, of course, one single voluntary muscular contraction. Therefore, that's our max, isn't it? We are selecting a body part, more specifically a muscle group and we are measuring the one rep max for that. We select a realistic weight, we lift it, we rest for five minutes, we then repeat this process until the maximum is found. Now, can I be clear? We are specifically lifting until failure. And when we achieve failure, in other words, we can't lift one of them, it's the weight before that which we take as the measure. Now, this has numerous strengths to it. First of all, it's really adaptable, folks. In other words, I can have a one rep max test for any of my muscle groups whatsoever. Secondly, it's direct measure, and anything which is a direct measure really increases the validity factor of the test. Also the reliability, but it's a direct measure. We're also using basic equipment. So yes, we need, let's say, a barbell for argument's sake, but that's available to most people, so therefore it's advantageous. And of course, because it's a field test, you know, we do it in our sporting environment or the gym or club or whatever it happens to be, that makes it super practical as a result. Now, there are some issues with it. Guess what? It is a maximal test and therefore, how we sort of reach that maximal and, and, and the, whether the maximal is actually physical, we give up for a psychological reason. These are called volitional states and that's of course a limitation. Some people have poor lifting technique. This, this actually presents two problems. One is that we might not be measuring the strength of the muscle. We might, that's an E by the way on the end, might not be measuring the strength of the muscle. We might be measuring the fact that this person kind of arcs their back and gets their glutes into it. Or for example, it could be that the person can't get to their lifting, their best measure because their technique is poor. It's no good for groups. So you'll find this is very time consuming when it comes to groups. And let me put that one in. You know, imagine in your class, for example, you had to do this for each muscle group uh, and for each individual in a group. That would take a whole chunk of time and you're probably gonna find that you're not gonna do that because it's impractical. Now, let's take it further. Very base tests here. We've got one minute press-up test and we've got one uh, minute sit-up test. These are literally how many sit-ups or press-ups you can do in a minute. So of course it measures strength endurance, that kind of repeated contractions. The person must use the correct technique and the count of the sit-ups is ultimately what we're gonna take away. And can I stress this point here is that performers can take breaks but the clock keeps running. So if this person smashes out a bunch of press-ups and then needs a little five-second recovery, they can do that, the test does not stop. 
but of course the clock keeps moving so the pacing becomes important in this particular one so advantages how simple could this be we're talking about a mat a stopwatch and assistant that's really all we need it's wonderful for groups everybody can do this at the same time so you probably end up having a go at this the technique is relative there is technique to it, of course but the technique is simple or it's it, it's easy to learn so that shouldn't be a restriction and of course it's a field test and that field test makes it a super practical one and one that you're probably likely to experience but there are weaknesses here so first of all and this is more of a general point really it's not respected this is not going to be a respectable sort of a test measure that's going to be used at a, a sort of a high level i mentioned this before you could argue that it measures pacing and what I mean by that is it might not be a measure of how many press-ups you can do or how many sit-ups you can do, but did you pace it right in the in the one minute? And of course, the other thing is it's maximal. So coming back to our sort of motivation of volitional, volitional states, that's an issue for us as well. Now let's finish this off strong. We wanna look at the vertical jump test. And we're actually using a mechanic here to develop our vertical jump. But of course, you may well end up doing this with nothing but a piece of chalk and a gym wall or something like that. It's absolutely normal. But what we are measuring is elastic explosive strength. We're gonna reach up and make a mark. Now, that mark simply be our standing reach height and it's just there for example on our machine here but we make that mark we then jump and let's say we get to here we might make the mark with the chalk but what ultimately we're going to do is we're going to measure the difference between those two points that's what gives us our distance score now why is this really effective now look at some of the words we're going to be using here very consistent with some of the others simple cheap you know it can be as cheap as a bit of chalk that's pretty damn cheap it's quick it doesn't take a long time to do this and also it's a field test so we're really starting to get the nature of our strengths and weaknesses across these tests right but there are problems with it <clears throat> it measures leg power only now that's an interesting observation because you could also argue it's measuring sort of upper body power in sort of the, the the actual kind of impulse to get yourselves off the ground but of course our other classic criticism is it's maximal so there we've gone through what we said at the start is we've got our descriptions which i sort of pre-made for you but we've got particularly our evaluations and that folks is likely at least to be where your marks come from on this particular topic talking about the strengths and weaknesses and the application of practicality of these tests remember your practicality your validity your reliability and you won't go far wrong thanks